in order for the organization to continue to exist, cult-like behavior makes itself manifest. You have to have this type of behavior. Constant instruction is given to its members to show unyielding honor, total loyalty. I mean, they've been doing this for years, but it's continuing on. And uh, they want you to respect and continuing to push this through the pages of their articles. They want you to continually to continue to respect the, the authority, the, 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 the elders, the, the servants. Now, in this particular magazine, October 15th, 2008, that's right around now, isn't it, huh? And uh, we go to page 22. We go to page 22, and it's concerning authority, but I want you to s These are the study editions again. Everything I'm getting this from, the, the other editions, the private, ed uh, the public edition of the Watchtower, I should say, is very fluffy. Very, you know, it's very fluffy. It's almost like an awake magazine used to be. But these, th this is where the meat in due season. Same subjects, so they all get a different subject. They're, they're, they're easier to understand subjects. They're, they're just for the public, so to speak. And they can just, uh, it's like awake magazines. I should have brought one up here with me, but I'll show you one later if you want to see it. But they, but don't, they don't have the same articles? They don't have, they don't have the same articles on them, no. No, they don't have the same articles, they're different articles. So this, this, is, this, this is for, now why would you think they'd come out with a, a special study edition of the Watchtower? This, this is so they can really get this cult behavior the, going, get, get people really conditioned to, to being accepting the authority of the watchtower. But notice what it says here, and this is on page uh, 22, paragraph 12. And I want to say that because I know there's people right out there now on the internet, and we want to thank you for coming in here and being with us. And uh, so they want to make notes of this as well, because we have a lot of people out there. There's, it's very possible, John, there's more people on that internet than there is in this little room right here today. So we welcome all you people on internet being here with us. But this is what it says on page uh, 23. It says the lesson, this is paragraph 12, the lesson we learn is twofold. First, it is spiritual for the faithful and discreet slave through its governing body to appoint men to positions of responsibility. And some men are appointed to exercise authority over other appointed men. I know where they're going with this. See, I've learned one of the tricks in the Watchtower Society long ago. Well, what the, one of the major tricks is what the Watchtower does is they tell you before they tell you, and then they tell you while they're telling you, and then they tell you what they told you. So what they're doing here is they're telling us before they tell us. They're, they're setting up a new arrangement with circuit overseers. We'll get into that. And what they're telling you here, that arrangement's gonna be taking place for the next three years, but what they're telling you right here in this article is for men that are appointed to make sure that you have total respect for the authority above you because they're gonna be like a new chain of command that's coming up in the watchtower. So uh, traveling overseers are certainly to be counted among those who have been working hard. Therefore, let us give them more than extraordinary consideration. See, so here we go. Yes, we know the overseers work hard and uh, they, they, they want to give them extra consideration. Well, men don't have full authority over us, do they? Only our master, Jesus Christ, has that full authority over us. We don't have to show more than the extraordinary consideration to any power-mongering organization, do we? We have to show extra consideration in extraordinary consideration to our Lord Jesus. That's who we show the consideration to. Now, without question, the Watchtower is becoming more cultish. I'm gonna play a tape here coming up. I want you to turn on your warning alarms. I want you to just listen to this, and it's a talk that was given by a man by the brother, he's in the organization, James Rayford. This talk was given at a special assembly day. And this one's concerning Matthew, the 24th chapter, verse 14. Can we hit that, Richard? I'm going to put these notes down here for a minute and just say something to you. I'd like for you to listen to this very carefully. For those of us at Bethel, we have the privilege of working with the faithful and discreet slave, the governing body. 
And I would like for you to know how the governing body, Faithful Slave, feels about the way things are right now in this system of things, the time period in which you are living. The Faithful Slave feels that they have fulfilled Matthew 24:14. This good news has been preached in all the inhabited earth for a witness. What does the next part of that text say after the end will come do you know that there are only three countries in the entire world where there are no witnesses today only three countries they are Somalia North Korea and Afghanistan that doesn't mean that the literature is not in those countries there's no witnesses there and I mentioned this yesterday to some of the friends, and they wanted to know why. We can cut it there, Richard. Oh, Just wanted to get a little sample. How, how creepy is that? Yeah. I mean, really. I mean, you know, you want to talk about cult-like behavior. Imagine listening to that. It, it would spook you out. But uh, what I want to know, if, if Matthew, the 24th chapter, verse 14, is fulfilled, according to the witnesses, why are they still encouraged to go on field service? Yeah. So that's an interesting thought, too. Now, I want you to listen to another wayward talk. This one's really over the top. As a matter of fact, it was given by brother Ciro Alessino. Now, Ciro Alessino is, was and is still one of the Watchtower officials. In fact, he is the one that requested the termination of the Watchtower Society from the association with the UN back in the year 2001. Now, one cannot believe this talk was given at a convention. I, I couldn't believe it when I first heard it. It wasn't given at an assembly either. From what we can gather, it was given at one of these Saturday Night Kingdom Hall special speaker presentations. And so this is where he evidently gave the talk. It was given somewhere on the East Coast. And, and I want you to listen to how he says things because it really could mess a person up. Uh, you will be with me in paradise. Take a quick, take a quick listen to this one. Uh, that's the Arm uh, uh, that's Armageddon, yep. Yeah. <laughs> give us strong encouragement to lay firm hold on this hope that he has set before us. And best of all, friends, believe me, when it is all over, we will love Jehovah our God more than we ever did before. Yes, we will leave this hall today with a far greater appreciation for the loving way Jehovah is using his son to save us. However, we must be awake to the fact that very soon, the greatest tribulation since the world's beginning will come in upon all those dwelling upon the face of all the earth. This is going to be a terrible time for mankind. Our godly fear, including your speaker, will be increased beyond measure. We are going to be frightened, friends, during this time. However, when Armageddon is over, we are going to face a rather gruesome, not a rather, a very gruesome situation. Let's turn to Jeremiah 25 and see what he tells us about it through this prophet. Jeremiah 25, 33. And those slain by Jehovah will certainly come to be in that day from one end of the earth clear to the other end of the earth. They will not be bewailed, neither will they be gathered up or be buried. As manure on the surface of the ground, they will become. Now, try to picture this, friends, this gruesome picture. Dead bodies and body parts of the wicked will lie strewn on the surface of the ground, in streets, alleyways, fields, and buildings. Now, notice that God, in this verse, tells us here that no one will mourn or bury these dead ones. Now, what does this tell us? It shows us that we will not be traumatized by his mass annihilation of these individuals. No, his divine execution of the wicked will not haunt us for the rest of our lives. Rather, we will react to it today. He went on for two hours. Two hours talking about Armageddon, talking about the bodies, and the new light on this now. Maybe we could hit the new light? The, the new light on this one is simply uh, the witnesses are not longer going to be responsible for cleaning up the bodies. God, God is... God, in his ultimate wisdom, is going to be able to help the witnesses with that. He wouldn't give them such a burden. That, that's what he goes on to say in that tape. 